Welcome back, everybody. This is the second episode of Rage Quit. Rage Quit. I'm Anthony Schultz. <laughs> Very little <old> Schultz. <laughs> you can follow us at Anthony R. Schultz on Twitter. At Merhaven, because it's self-explanatory. We have the husband and wife duo that talk about things. Dun, dun, dun. Fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, <laughs> in our first episode, we talked about Days Gone. Uh, it was kind of like a spoiler podcast. It was. Uh, yeah. We did save it, though, mm -hmm. uh, waiting for the release for right. the like free DLC or like content <clears throat> patch for Days Gone mm -hmm. that just released this last Friday. We, we kind of looked out on that one. We'll yeah, I was trying to plan it out, right? And I finally got to the point where I'm like, eh, it's June. I know, it's, I know it. it's releasing in June, so I'm going to edit and set it to post finally. Because I'm tired it, of sitting on these it podcasts. It did, yeah. And, well, I know we're tired of sitting on the podcast, but it was good time. Like, legit, I think it came out literally the same day it set the it patch. Was, like, the day before, two days before? Something like that, yeah. I don't know if I caught my voice, but... Um, yeah, so my intention was to sit on the Days Gone podcast because right. I feel like we had missed that sweet spot before when yeah. the game released. But I did want to talk about it, and I think that was a really good episode. It was a good start. So, Ariel's. I <laughs> uh, held on to it, and then, like Ariel said, I just got lucky in the posting of it, because the big DLC drop, mm -hmm. uh, or the free patch, uh, came out like two days prior. It did, yeah. Days. So, hopefully it's more relevant now, and that episode will get some, some buzz. All the buzz. The yeah. buzz. Um, so, tell me about... What we're doing, what's happening, and why we're changing things up to the end. So, Ariel and I draw notes every week. We'll talk throughout the week about uh, Rage Quit and, like, what we want to discuss. Uh, sometimes episodes are divided out into, like, several different parts. So, our initial outline for this episode, we were going to talk about Rage 2. Uh, we were going to talk about streaming in general mm -hmm. and some of the hardships, especially that uh, female gamers deal with streaming. And a little bit about video game soundtracks. Uh, I posed the question on Twitter. You may have gotten drunk. <laughs> yeah. Uh, about, uh, you know, what Is this What your favorite video game soundtracks are mm. of the, the people who follow me. And I didn't oh, expect boy. it to really, like, <laughs> take off or be, like, important or kind of successful. But it did. It took off. And there was a lot of great feedback. Oh, yeah. And... Right now, if you head on over to Twitter, uh, it it probably won't be a pinned tweet now when no. you're listening to this. We'll have the next one up. But you can check it in my feed. And, uh, it, it blew up. There was a ton of like great people who chimed in and said what their favorite one was. And there was a lot of good kind of like conversations. What we should listen to to kind of talk about as well. or So a small part of our outline is now going to encompass the entire episode mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna save streaming and you know the, the woes of uh, female gamers and how that affects the streaming community for next episode it's still we important it'll be talked about it's very important and i definitely want to talk about that however the feedback we got from twitter Just is dictating the structure it, yeah. of rage quit which is really cool nothing wrong with it i feel like uh tweet heavy episodes or question heavy episodes or Singular things that they're done correctly are perfectly fine. Yeah, and I was I was blown away by like the support the response and the and response that we got from it, and how there was nothing negative. It was all very positive, and it was yeah, everyone like, like encouraged us to listen to this, listen to that. I mean, and we did, which is kind of cool. Like right before we shot this, uh, a lot of the soundtracks that were mentioned uh, during that thread we did list out. We had already heard. The few that we hadn't listened, we just listened to, to, we listened to right before this. So we could definitely have like a little bit more of like an understanding. What they meant by it, what's the meaning, or kind of like the jazzy the tunes. Yeah, exactly. So we could like adequ <laughs> adequately like discuss it. So so I think we're going to first dive into our favorites. Yeah, so and I think that's a perfect way to do it. Uh, we're going to talk about our favorite uh, sound video game soundtracks and why, and mm -hmm. like why that adds to video games or certain games in particular. And then uh, I'm going to open up the the Twitter thread and just on my phone, and we're going to kind of go through those one by one. I'm going to give those least. people a shout out. 
Yes. And then we'll talk about their favorite uh, video game soundtracks. You know that we've listened to all of them, mm -hmm. and we'll we'll add to it kind of a thing. All of them are good, by the way. Oh yeah, it's not something. Yeah, every single game soundtrack that anyone suggested Honestly, what was game awesome. Soundtracks not bad. The fucking game soundtracks are just badass nowadays. Even back in the day. Yeah, it depends. I mean, there's some where it definitely goes into the background. Oh yeah, I'm not saying it doesn't go in the background, but still, there's something there. You know, it's not a focus, you know, for the game or the development team. However, everyone that suggested something, it was... Very important. Maybe not necessarily at the forefront, but very important to the gameplay and the yeah. game itself. And well, they had good memories and kind of nostalgic trips about it, which is really cool to see. It is, and I think this is a good segue into what ours is. And I think I'm going to talk first, because uh, I think... I don't play a whole lot of video games, and I've said this before. I love watching Anthony play, so a lot of the nostalgia games are what he's recently played for us together in the last six years. I, uh, I Mortal Kombat, then that, you know, finish him, like, ah, da, you know, dumb shit like that, or Pokemon. Although, the soundtrack to the movie, fucking badass. Okay, I'll give you that. But yeah, The original Mortal Kombat movie, I had that shit on cassette. But we're, but we're not talking about that. <clears throat> no, that's a little off the beaten path, but still. Animal Crossing, come on. <laughs> really? Um, <clears throat> that's what I mean, though. Not every, uh, like, uh, game developer focuses on the soundtrack. No, the but that's, that's a good point, too. Yeah. But the games that the game that I love and will always play and I love to play and I really, 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 really want it on the Switch is Ocarina of Time. Yeah. I love that game. Which we have and a 3DS port of, but on the Switch would be great. It would be, oh, God. Because you could play it handheld. Because I played it on the 64. Be... I played it on the fucking Cube. Yeah. The, all the DSs. I have all sorts of fucking versions of the Ocarina of Time until the Switch, where it doesn't have it. Even we had Ocarina of Time. Oh, did it? I, I didn't think know it that. Did. It might have did. I might be wrong. I'm, don't quote me. But... I know Twilight Princess was ported over quite a few times, and... Mm-hmm. Uh, a few others have. Yeah, they were kind of relinquished to the 3DS. Skyward Sword. Was Skyward on the Sword Wii. was on the Wii. And, and the, the Wii, Wii U. U. Yeah. Uh, the Switch, I think, is coming out with those. It's kind of tapering itself. It'll, it'll, I think it'll, we'll get those one day. Yeah, and there are... Um, this is pre-E3. This will post right in the middle of it or right after it. Yeah. But there are rumors that there is going to be a, a big... Uh, like, HD Zelda's release. On well, the Switch, I saw so. it, uh, it's probably just a rumor, but it was a Skyward uh, Princess, uh, Twilight Princess, Twilight Princess, yeah, yeah. and the D and or the Wind Waker. Switch. Wind Waker. That yeah. was the other one, and that was rumored back in like April. And Nintendo will do a Nintendo <laughs> Direct during E3, so when we do the next podcast, we might touch base on this. <laughs> we but, like, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it does look promising. I, I think remasters in general and their music included and probably especially so mm -hmm. are going to be remastered for the switch just like they have been for like the ps4 and the xbox and yeah. stuff like that i mean th those are like the great games that have great soundtracks mm -hmm. great gameplay a good fan base behind them and like that sense of nostalgia those are the ones that are being pushed forward which is nice well, and the reason why for me, Ocarina of Time is so important to me because, honestly, that's the really first game I honestly remember playing by myself. Yeah. You know, not having to fight with siblings or whatever. I played that game on my own. And, and that's how I posed the question on Twitter, too, is, like, what what, what nostalgic chord does this hit with you? Mm -hmm. And some of them were, and it depends on your age, too, um, were more modern. Other ones were really old games you yeah. know, that I remember, like, playing as a kid. Well, yeah, and it's like I, I like I told you, like even after that, the only thing I really played was Pokemon, and then nothing really else after like Animal Crossing. That I really have <clears throat> music centric uh, games, and the only ones were my Zelda games at most, and even then, I know the scores for Zelda though always great. I know, right. but the only one that really had it was Ocarina of Time that I remember because I I didn't have any other console after the Cube. I yeah. didn't have console game. I always had like DS or something, and I always had the game volume on low or muted because when I played it was at night or on a camping trip or something. <laughs> I've always found that weird, by the way, because for me, uh, sound has always <laughs> played. Hey guys, sorry, right, I, I edited uh, that out. Them. That was great. Um, <laughs> like for me, the the sound, even if it's just for like an animation or like effects, or yeah, for, and background music. I never played that. Have like played an important part in, like, the immersion factor for a video game. Is, I've always really liked which it. Which is funny, because for me, it's like, 
unless you have like really good music like Ocarina of Time because you obviously I love playing the flute and stuff and obviously yeah, yeah. you gotta play the flute to change it to the daytime and yada 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 uh, that's true I forgot about that you did you, had you to were play in band the and did that kind of stuff yeah you had to similar, play yeah. you know to make it night to make it day to go back in time to come forward in time so I like to listen to him play the flute or the forest songs and stuff like that and I like listening to that, but when I had my DS, it's like I always had my games on mute or down low because it was just constant, like the Pokemon, and it was like, oh my god, my brain's going to explode, quit fucking playing that dance. Two chip tunes I loved. This is what I was down with that. Well, you and Ollie both dance to that. I find that shit annoying. I love chip tunes. Chip tunes are great. But I, I mean, I... I'm a fucking child of the 80s and grew up with video well, games. Well, that's so. what makes the difference. Like we talked about before, the growing up playing games versus growing up not playing games, and that kind of also plays a factor in the music, too. Yeah, absolutely. However, I do want to, like, what is your opinion? Like, I, I am not a musician and Dante. not a singer. I can't sing to save my life. I do love music, though, overall, not even just with video games. Um, for you, like, you were, I know you were in band. Oh, yeah, I played. I played flute. Um, how do you attach that to, like, some of, like, even I think, just Zelda? Like, I think those Zelda got games. me into wanting to play the flute because it was kind of, uh, not a flute, but it was. Oh, so Zelda was, like, prior the, to yeah. you being in band? Yeah, and it, it kind of drove you to play the It was, flute? yeah. Okay, that's it, interesting. Because Zelda, shit, when did that come out? Off your time. Hold on. Pause. It was, like, late 90s. Yeah, and I didn't play the flute until I was Mid to late like, 90s. middle school. That would make sense, yeah, because even if you hit 99, which I know it's earlier than that, but oh, you'd be 8 then. Yeah, and I didn't go into middle school when I started playing So it would have been like early No, uh, early no, odds. I played 6th grade. Yeah, but still, yeah, you would have only been 8 in 99. Uh, I was, that would be 6th grade. It was 98 when it was released. Okay, yeah, so late 90s. So you're right in there. So 7, and then uh, a few years I later, was early odds. 12, 11 when I... Went into sixth, uh, out of sixth grade and seventh grade, and I started playing band in sixth grade. So like, two thousand two, two thousand three, in there. Yeah, so just so a few it, years, years after, after. But that, it moved me towards playing the flute because I love that harmonic yeah, yeah. and then the melody of it. I don't like That's the really str- cool, I don't like the string instruments. I like string instruments, but I don't like the string instruments. Yeah, because, to play. Yeah. Because I had to do with the game or game control. I had to do you know, da, 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 as a pattern. And oh, when you play, that makes sense. But when you play the flute, it's the same thing. It's a finger. It's a pattern. Oh. I never thought of it that and, way. And That's I, interesting. And I'm OCD pattern. I love patterns. So yeah, no, I'd be down with playing that. Playing the flute is memorizing patterns, not with strings. We have to memorize. Make sure your fingers just angle correctly. Yeah, you got to yeah, angle yeah. your finger this way, and it's like fuck that shit. I'd rather patterns and it's oh fuck i'm wondering if i would be decent at like an instrument like that i never <laughs> thought of that like that's a very like I, I valid point I like, the ocd that's when i that's how i got in i never thought about that because yeah, yeah like patterns and finger movement i'm down with from being a gamer for so many years but i always tried to play <laughs> string instruments however when i did try to play the piano i was down with that because it was patterns it's so patterns. i get that it's but patterns. i never correlated the two no no no. And that's, that's a good and that, point and that's how i always got it it's, it's patterns it's how your finger it doesn't how your finger twitches quite right on the strings, and, or your finger your finger bows and you judge. Yeah, 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 you have to have a certain angle, it's and you have to coordinate two hands. And two hands. Yeah. We just have to coordinate two hands, but it's patterns. You know, these three fingers down, this finger up, this finger down, and this fast. You have to do faster. You have to do slow. Oh, yeah, I could totally memorize patterns. Like, and that's how. That's like really cute okay, shit. Okay, I got something. I never told you this. Uh, surprise for everybody. I never learned to read sheet music. Yeah, that's always da- like been daunting to me as well. To be honest, I never learned. I learned the pattern of the, the the. I didn't know what A's, B's, C's, or anything it was. Yeah, so you're not playing specific like chords or notes. No, I'm playing for patterns. you. Yeah, the sounds pattern. and patterns. Yeah, always sounds and patterns. Which I wonder. I'm sure somebody could like comment, especially. Oh, I forgot to bring this up in the beginning. Um, so to break away uh, just a little bit. Uh, in the first episode of Rage Quit, in the very beginning, uh, I talked about how we were going to go through Libsyn. Libsyn? I Libsyn, think that's how you pronounce Libsyn, it. Libsyn, whatever. Uh, for our podcast hosting service. Mm. Uh, in the in-between time, especially since we sat on that first episode for so long, uh, we did shift gears and decide to go with CastBox because it has a community attached. It's more affordable to host. And... You can have, like, multiple channels and multiple podcasts mm-hmm. for the same kind of pricing, and we do multiple podcasts. Yeah. For ASI, Iron Mermaid, and 
Sexual bow ties. Sexual bow ties, which is Iron Mermaid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's so ASI, ASI and Iron Mermaid in particular. We, yeah. we have separate podcasts, so we can do separate channels and stuff. So, if you're looking on Libsyn for us in particular for hosting, and that's something that you use, you're not going to find us there. Oops, our bad. However, if you go to CastBox, uh, it will disseminate out into, like, popular podcast services. Uh, check us out there. And if you haven't checked out CastBox, please do so. It is free to use. That's why we like it, too. Um, so, our, our, our fan base people, doesn't have to, doesn't have to uh, pay to listen to us. Yeah, exactly, and it has a great kind of community function built into it, so Mm -hmm. if you download CastBox for your phone, if that's how you listen to podcasts in general, uh, you can comment on things, you can talk to other fans, uh, you can suggest things, and we do go through those. Yes. So for all of our podcasts. even We are very vigilant on trying to, well, I'm not not as popular as you, but uh, you're the face, I'm not. Um, Get comments back on what people say on our Twitters or whatever. And at the moment, because we're small, I do reply to every single comment. Like, we'll still probably I don't. Do I don't know if I can always do that, but I definitely do right now. Mm-hmm. Like it may be a few days, depending on like production times or what or we're where, doing as a family. What, yeah. But I do comment back to everyone, um, no matter what the matter. question. Yeah, it's within a few days at mm-hmm. most. Usually within the day. But regardless, yeah. that's tangential. Uh, I find that very fascinating, though, that uh, Zelda and that soundtrack uh, pushed you into to yeah into band and playing the flute, mm-hmm. like, and that's a good correlation to make that it's more about patterns than a stringed instrument would be, which is I think more of a like a gamer mentality, mm-hmm. and yeah. that that's one of the reasons you love like the Zelda soundtrack. It is, it is, yeah, and that's kind of what I was saying. It got me into playing. Like that's flute. fascinating. That's really cool. The flute stuff's like. I honestly, to this day, you give me sheet music, mm, but yeah. I can remember. I'll get the patterns down. I watch your, I'll watch your fingers. I got this. Yeah, you can mimic somebody. I can mimic someone. Yeah, if you saw them do it. Yeah. That's why when I paint, that's how I paint. I mimic someone. Yeah. I can create my own artwork, but at the same time, I'm better at mimicking. Yeah, and for me as a writer, it's, it's the same kind of thing. I see narrative structures everywhere. Uh, But I am more inclined to mimic, especially older narrative structures, on purpose. Yeah. Because older writings, especially in, like, uh, modernism or Mm postmodernism, like, writings in uh, American culture, I can mimic those. And I I want to. Like, I want to either pay homage or try to improve Um, on a narrative structure that's not used very often nowadays. Narrative with a modern twist. Yeah. But anyway, so... Where it's your favorite? Uh, most recently, I definitely Days Gone. True. Like I know no we're be- beating a you know a dead horse to death, but ain't dead enough. Uh, Days Gone because I really do find myself as I've gotten older uh, more interested <laughs> in um like Americana or yeah. like folk music. That's what Ollie loves folk music. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. That kind of stringed, like, guitar, like, instrumentation and those, like, lyrics not about... Not country the... bumpkin, but... No, not that far. Like, I'm not very much into country music or pop country music, but folk music, I'm thinking, like, more, I guess, alternative folk music, like, along the lines of, like, Jack White and yeah, things yeah. like that. Um, I really enjoy. And I think Days Gone does it well. And on top of it, Days Gone is set... You know, in our backyard, it's set. And, yeah. It's set in Oregon, and we're Eastern Washingtons, mm-hmm. Washingtonians, and it's very close. It's it takes place in places that we've been to. Yes. And that we've seen, you know, growing up for the last you know thirty years. Well, I think that's why it's a cannot necessarily being a dead horse because you would get those people who are like this game's based out of New York and da da da. I've been there da da da. You always gonna get people who are like that podcasters and that gamers, pulls at the nostalgic kind of thread too, which is how I posed the question on Twitter. And so I think that's really cool and like apropos for where I live and the kind of games that I'm interested Are in. Not here. Where do you go? Where I go? Everywhere. Uh, We've been always been together. Yeah, but you said I. Whatever. <laughs> um. Another one I that like comes to mind like right away is Doom. 
<laughs> like, I really want to get that vinyl soundtrack. I think Doom has that kind of heavy metal beat, but it's not over the top where it's like screamo and things like no, that. No, I know. I'm just, it's funny. But Doom's great. I'm just thinking, oh, like, he dances to it. It's so and He does, yeah. <laughs> and it, it just has that great, like, heavy rock kind of, like, vibe to it, and it fits the game so well. Yeah. That that soundtrack I could listen to all the time. And I'm oh, yeah. referencing the Doom remake uh, or reboot. And that I just, that I love. Uh, if we're gonna go even further back, uh, one of my friends on Twitter, uh, Shadow, mentioned Yeez. That's another good one. I'm mm -hmm. a neophyte to that, but I like old school RPGs. Yeah. And so you're kind of straight into eight bit, but not like not, chip tunes. Not, not, yeah. And like I told you, I'm not too, a big fan of chip tunes. So that era is like particularly nostalgic for me because you get really good. Uh, you get really good soundtracks kind of in that in-between generation. Uh, you get Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which we have on vinyl. Yeah, which is great. Cool. I, I really enjoy that, that kind of gothic horror music fi fill. Feel? Feel? feel. Both, both apply, Andy actually. Feels. <laughs> yeah. It's not Neil Feels. <laughs> Andy Feels. Andy Feels. I yeah. feel like I should do a uh, like side podcast where it's just me monologuing. You don't really fucking rant in my ears. What shit? What did yeah, I pretty say? much. Yeah. What the fuck did I say? You don't really. Sort of the eye. Irritates me. It aggravates me. One uh, of those. I don't know, something. But shit. it was close. It's yeah. close. Hey, anyway, whatever. Uh, that generation in particular, Probably. I think, spawned uh, a lot of good music. Yeah. See, I Castlevania did. Symphony of the Night, uh, Final Fantasy VII, Eight, and Nine. Well, those soundtracks like, are great. It, we just got my vinyl for Zelda, and it's like same era too. Same Ocarina fucking time. symphony, yeah. like fucking performed it. I'm not saying that video game like studios don't do it nowadays. Mm -mm. Well, I've, I've heard a, a lot of great stuff. Well, it's like actually, we talked about, especially like, when Days Gone, where the guy. He made the freaker sounds and music out of a bow, string bow on a fucking tambourine. Yeah, there was like a weird, like, noise that was made mm -hmm. and it translated to a very specific chord. And then the Days Gone composer used that for and the made... basis for yeah, the entire yeah. soundtrack. That's crazy in his own life. And now he, I believe he is like award winning mm -hmm. for it. And has gone on to do, you know, other soundtracks and, and Or big in God of War, we had the Nordic Icelandic. Sing. Oh, no, it was the God of War composer that actually moved on to do Godzilla. Mm, That's okay, what it you was. got mixed up. But yeah, I did. did the, 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 due to the God of War, had, like, people from Iceland sing. Yeah, that was really cool. An so, old Norris. So there's Norse? a... Norse, yeah. Norse. There's a wonderful God of War documentary that you can find on YouTube and watch for free right now. Um, and then there's kind of, like, little asides. There's a small Days Gone documentary or mini doc about the, the composition and music mm -hmm. of days gone which is great like how he received like inspiration from um Even the landscape sounds, yeah and uh nature and organ and you know what it is to be a pacific northwest um native yes and he drew inspiration from that and created the composition and made sure it was accurate too the God of War composer did a similar kind of thing because the newest God of War is more like Norse centric. Well, like Fey, Freya, and yeah, the yeah. Loki, and, and Thor, Thor, and Thor's children, Thor. and he he went to Iceland in particular because their their language and their their choirs thus. Seeing the closest to what phonetically uh, the Old Norse language would be. And he used that as his choir for the God of War game, which I thought was really interesting. Like, it, it's not just musical composition, but there's, like, a lot of research and intent but behind it. What makes me kind of curious, though, is I love shit like that, too, but at the same time, the simplistics where someone's just got a flu and going, do 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 that's why I love 8-bit, like, or chiptunes. I do love chiptunes. That's why I like that, because it, it is more simplified, for sure, because they but can only be, do something. To be fair, something. when I'm playing Pokemon and I'm about ready to catch a Pokemon, like, I don't like it when I'm in the grass and nee, 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 crap, that's yeah. annoying. But when I'm fighting or in a battle, I will turn the music up enough so I can hear it, depending on where I'm at, to 
That's so why you've, I, you've heard me do it too, because I go, hold on, there's no sound, there's no sound, sound, there's no sound, yeah. sound, there's no sound. I think I drove you insane doing that one day. Well, that's why, like, the Final Fantasy VII battle music is still, like, my iPhone, you know, <laughs> yeah, call da, sign. Da, 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 da. Yeah, and we all know it, but it's like, that's a very simple kind of, like, audio bite, but I, I absolutely love it, and yeah. it reminds me of Final Fantasy. Yeah. And they've used that kind of, like, cadence in all oh, of the so other Final Fantasies yep, yep. afterwards. Like, it may be a little bit different. Well, you know what's but... nice, too? It's like, the funniest thing is, like, I don't care what you... <laughs> what you say. Well, it's no different than what's his face singing every time. Da, 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 when I walk around. Oh, Final Fantasy fifteen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's it's, his face? Uh... Fuck. The blonde guy. Oh, fuck. He's a robot. Yeah. 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 Anyways. Well, kind of. Yeah, he's a clone. He's going whatever. Well, the, the one the one thing I don't care what anyone says. If you don't press prompt a two. prompt to, if you don't prompto, if prompt you up, don't yeah. freaking press a when you're catching a Pokemon, you won't catch it. Even though it's nothing to do with it. Yeah, even those little like animation like audio sequences are great depending on what it is. Well, it's like you gotta hit the A button. And you won't catch a Pokemon in a Pokeball. Even though it's nothing to do with catching a Pokemon. Yeah, which is interesting. I do it. I I, I still do it to this day. Like even on my new game, like, yeah, you gotta get a Pokemon. And it still, like, won't. Well, I think, fuck, I did that on the... No. I hate Sun and Moon. Ugh, that one disappoints me. That'll be a topic of discussion for another podcast. Anywho, so let's pop up Twitters. Yeah, so and... th- those are our favorites. Um, what are your favorites? To reiterate again, I posted it on Twitter. I'm at Anthony R. Schultz. So I preface my tweet with, uh, best video game soundtracks, go. I have my favorites, but it's a topic of discussion for my next podcast. Whoop, whoop. Here we are. Uh, tell me about the video game music that strikes that nostalgic chord in you. Uh, I really hope I don't like butcher names, but... Oh, we will. Marco Gerbes? You already did. Yeah, I did. That's why I said that. He did. Ahead of time. He did. He uh, done fucked it up. <laughs> at Lidocaine84. That's even worse. That's the name you butchering it. Uh, maybe some more, but these are the best in my small video game world. I don't recall what he said. It's not the hair. Oh, no. Did he delete it? I hope not. I'm going to go through the thread real quick. Oh, here we go. So he mentioned Fallout 4, Anno 1800, Anno 1602, and Final Fantasy 7. So unfortunately, I couldn't find links to listen to Anno 1800 and Anno 1602. We tried. I really apologize because I have no idea what that is as a gamer. No. And I have a feeling if I don't know what it is, it's probably great. <laughs> like, <laughs> the music's probably awesome for it, especially if he's dredging up something obscure to me. And I use quotes, air quotes. Fallout 4, though, I have listened to the soundtrack. We listen to Fallout music all, all the time. The time. Oh, Fallout 4 was great. Love Fallout music. Uh, Final Fantasy 7, um, there'll be a photo that posts with this podcast. It's your Fallout 7 and my Zelda vinyl you just bought and got. Yeah, so we we got an Ocarina of Time vinyl soundtrack and we got a Rare. the first Rare. Distant Worlds uh, Final Fantasy Orchestra collection. Rare version, FYI. Uh, on vinyl as well. And so it has some selected tracks of Final Fantasy 7, mm-hmm. which is the first Final Fantasy I ever played. So I totally dig that. I'm down Especially with it. Same as Zelda, so. Like, Final Fantasy 7 is amazing. Uh, Fallout 4, that kind of 1950s Vibe, flair, yeah. um, and then the ambient kind of background music that fits into that world is great. Oh, yeah. Like, that composer does an amazing job, and the, the selector for even, like, the Fallout radio. And you're just cracking up. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't know if you have anything to add to that, but... No, pretty... Spot on. I mean, most of the stuff, unfortunately, like I said, I don't. I only think is I play with you, so. So. And Fallout was mentioned quite a bit. So was Final Fantasy and quite a few of them, so. A few of them, yeah. I'm trying to get a hit like the. Uh, you can read the next one. The Mass Effect 3 one. So, Mass Effect 3. We just listened to that one. 
Didn't we? Mm hmm That one was good. I like that one. Uh, Yees, we listen to. Well, who said the Mass Effect 3? Oh, sorry. My bad. So, because I fucked up, Mass Effect 3 by Appalachian Atom Cat. Adam Cat. And then what are they at, Twitter-wise? Should be right next to it. Uh, nope, because it's a long first name. Hold on. Drizzy Do. <laughs> Appalachian Atom Cat, that Drizzy Do. That's awesome. Uh, Mass Effect 3. We listened to that one. That was really good. We did just listen to that one uh, right before we recorded this podcast mm-hmm. as we were cooking. Um, we listened to Mass Effect. So, Ariel and I haven't played a lot of Mass Effect. We played Andromeda. We did. Which, for granted, there's a lot of kind of naysayers about that one. However, we're primarily like a Sony or PlayStation yeah, like we family don't, we in don't general. Yeah, we don't out too much. And the original Mass Effects were only on Microsoft for the longest time. Like, they're now, they have spread over into multi-platform kind of territory. Mm-hmm. But when we did listen to that soundtrack, it was really good. It's very uh, subtle, very is, like yeah. nuanced and kind of dark. It makes sense for that game. But I did enjoy it. It was a beautiful soundtrack. So thank you for the suggestion. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. Okay, next we have Shadow Morrison. We you talked about? Burbank City 2099. Yeast. Yeah, Yeast is great. Uh, Shadow and I became friends on Twitter uh, because of Yeast. So we both played Yeast Memories of Celsetta on the PlayStation Vita. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the things that I noticed like first uh, playing that game is the soundtrack. Like the music mm-hmm. is a good blend of like old school and new school. Yeah. And so I really enjoy that. And he sent us quite a few links. Uh, he did. There's like most of yeah. them. And I listened to all of those. Uh, most of them I had heard of. There was a couple in there that I didn't know. And I think that was a great <laughs> suggestion. Like, Yeast is kind of one of those underlying, like, RPGs that people don't pay attention to, but probably should. If yeah. they really like Final Fantasy or Zelda, even, or those kind of games, you'd like Yeast. Oh, yeah. So I would definitely recommend, like, cracking into it. If you still have a Vita, play Memories of Celsetta. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you have a Switch, uh, dive into, like, Yeast 7 and yeah. stuff like that. So we or, have... Or Yeast 8. Yeast 8, 8, sorry. Yeah. We have Eric uh, Cytek, Cytek Er, Cytek Er. He said Castlevania came to mind, came out. The very first came out is what he's talking about. So I don't have the, like, first few Castlevania soundtracks. However, I do have the soundtrack to Castlevania Symphony of the Night, mm-hmm. which is my personal favorite Castlevania. Let me go through this entire list for, you're going to be here for like an hour. It's not that long. Okay, okay. Um, I have that one on vinyl, and we do listen to that regularly. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's kind of that gothic kind of horror element to it. Which is Which awesome. is great, and it fits the tone and style of the game, like, perfectly. The only other, like, game franchise that I would, like, either recommend, and also has a great soundtrack, is uh, Dead Man Cry. Yeah, that kind of... Is that's gothic that. horror yeah, gothic as well. Horror. And they always kind of have, like, a hard rock undertone, which probably should be, like, the antithesis to that, yep. like, franchise. I like that old But it's not. Thing. Yeah. It, like, fits it perfectly. And I think that's another soundtrack that, if you like Castlevania music... You'll like that. You'll like Double May Cry music. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we have Jake Howard, JKMSTR101. Uh, he says opening music in Halo 3. So, this was kind of a surprise to both Ariel and I. We listened to all of the Halo soundtracks. Mm-hmm. Uh, we took a sampling from each one of them and listened to them. Yep. Uh, I popped them all on my iPhone, and as we were cooking, we were listening to them. Mm-hmm. We were both very, like, surprised with... Not how good it was. Like, that's the wrong way to put it, because that makes it sound derogatory. Mm-hmm. But... Because Halo's a great franchise. It was more how how diverse the music was. It doesn't it seem did, yeah. like it's a space marine music. No, it's very like rock or not country, but rock and horror. Or There's like, a little bit of everything and they all kind of bleeds like seamlessly yeah. with one another. And that's really cool. Uh, that composer did an amazing job of composing Halo music. He did, and yeah. It fits the tone of the games while 
simultaneously just being good music. It did. Okay, so we have Mindy D, Mindy D, Y, 763400043. I've got a shout out to her. She's one of my Fallout friends. She Fallout is. 76. She is. Yeah. Uh, Fallout 3, The Legend of Zelda opening theme, Persona 5. Boom, go. I do Zelda. I love Zelda. Yeah, so. go for Zelda. Zelda opening thing where you're riding a horse and it's just the soothing music. Like, I honestly would actually be playing my game. Remember my uh, uh, cube by the time. Nintendo cube. FYI, it's not a cube. They lie to you. GameCube. Uh, GameCube. But it was like a rectangular polygon thing. It's a lie. Yeah. Anyways, I would play it, but I... But it had an awesome handle. I know, right? Yeah. yeah. That was great. I, I wish love, consoles had a handle. I love playing that so fucking much. Like, I love... Oh, yeah, I'll never get tired of Ocarina of Time. I'll play the game over and I'll fucking the water. Fucking temple, though. Fuck that water temple. Um, anyways. Everybody always says that, which the is fucking fantastic. water temple, dude! And so I'll play that game, but then I'd fall asleep to it. So, it, um, you know, I'd be playing or whatever and put it on pause or save it and fall asleep to the opening theme song and I just constantly play the music over and over again. It's a oh, it's on loop? Loop. It's a loop. Yeah. And it's very soothing opening music. He's riding a horse in the field and I could just, it's playing in my head right now. I'm not going to tune that shit because I can't yeah, sing. Yeah, fair enough. But If I knew the tune, I would, but I don't. It's just, uh, yeah. I am playing those ones, unfortunately. Not yet. So, yeah, that's why I love it. Okay, but you are for Persona 5 and Fallout 3. So, Persona 5 in particular... I, I was not a Persona fan before. Uh, I got a PlayStation Vita, and I got Persona 4 Golden, because that's, like, I, I believe it's the highest rated game on the Vita. And it's it's technically like a, like a remaster or a port mm -hmm. of Persona 4. Yeah. Love the game. I thought it was great. It totally dived me into the Persona series. The music for Persona 4 Golden is great also. Uh, I pre-ordered Persona 5, mm -hmm. and that one is, Great. even though I haven't finished it, because it's fucking gigantic yeah. and difficult, uh, it's my favorite. Like, it the style of it is jazzy. great. It's very jazzy. The music's amazing mm -hmm. for that game. Even in just basic animations, uh, not just, like, when ambient laundry, background noise. Yeah, yeah it, that soundtrack is simultaneously Japanese. <laughs> realistic, poppy, and overall just amazing. Like, it, it fits the tone of what we do in day-to-day -day life, even as Americans. Mm -hmm. But you get to feel that kind of mm -hmm. Japanese influence, and then you're simultaneously playing a sim slash fantasy game. Yeah. And so, it bridges all those kind of things together in a wonderful soundtrack. It does. So we're going to talk about Fallout 3 next, but I'm going to shout out to Nuka Queen, Nuka Queen underscore, Nuka underscore Queen, because she talks about Fallout 3 as well. And uh, yeah, Mandy D talked about Fallout 3. Yeah, yeah. And Nuka Queen is one of my other friends on Twitter. Yeah, so those two are Fallout 3. I never played that. That's you. You showed me a bit of it. Fallout 3 still is my favorite Fallout game out of all of them. Even 4 and 76 and New Vegas. Like, I love all of them together and their franchise Vegas, is great. Not 3. Never mind. Uh, Fallout 3, though, was my first foray into Fallout and made me a Fallout fan. Uh, the music, especially with, um, oh, fuck, what was his name? 3 Dog. 3 Dog, the radio, like, DJ and host. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, was very nostalgic to a lot of older uh, EA games. Mm -hmm. So EA published a lot of like extreme sports kind of games, and I'm not really a big sports game player overall, but I do like uh, snowboarding and skateboarding and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, there was a, a good period where EA had like a radio DJ. Yeah. As you competed, you know, snowboarding or skateboarding wise or whatever it was, uh, that had kind of a curated list of music that they had the license for <laughs> and would, you know, spit you, like, this new music that was supposed to be, you know, Fine, cutting edge for yeah. new kids, yeah, like, kind of a thing. Time. But it, it was actually cool, and I really liked it, and I kind of missed that part of video games because they don't do it too much anymore. No, not really. Uh, Fallout 3 was one of the, one of the last, not the last, uh, that did that. You had a really important NPC who spit tunes at you, who was, like, the radio, like, disc jockey 
who gave you kind of classic 1950s music and that completely and utterly fit the world of Fallout. Yep. And I've honestly kind of missed that from uh, Fallout 4, New Vegas, and 76. Like, I wish they would bring that aspect back. Even if it was a different character, I don't care. Yeah. But if you just had in Fallout 76 a disc jockey fucking giving you music and filling you in on the stuff that's going on in the world, I would totally be down for that. And, that's true. and Fallout 3 really is like the the pinnacle of Fallout music. And, it is. And how it did it. So, All right, so both those people who mentioned that, awesome. Well, the third, I was just about to say, uh, Craig Westbrook Jr., PC Gamer, Bluto 4X, Fallout 3, News Vegas, and 4, the album from Grand Theft Auto, VC, uh, San, uh, SA. San Andreas. Uh, San Andreas, I was supposed to say that, but I don't like those games. Yeah, I'm not a huge Grand Theft Auto fan. However, mm. they were definitely some of the ones that did like a, uh, not exactly the same way, but kind of like a radio disc jockey kind of vibe. Yep. Okay, so since you got to talk those, we'll go, hey, Dante. <laughs> Hello, Fonte. Get out of dog food. I did listen to some Grand Theft Auto music, though, and I definitely dug it. It fits the tone of it. Uh, I may not be a fan of the franchise, however, I do love um, like gangster films of oh, all yeah, oh, of yeah. all eras, whether it's more modern or old school. You, you know, talk about nineteen eighties like Scarface the or Godfather. The craze. The craze. Or, yeah, yeah, the Cray Brothers. You know things along those if lines. I, know I the love. Cray come from the Cray Brothers because they're crazy as fuck. But they're yeah, the so French Cray Brothers. Cray. Yeah. Anyways, so but I know from me, I. I have listened to the Grand Theft Auto like soundtracks, even though I really don't play those games, just because it's not my style. Uh, they are good soundtracks. They are. Yeah, they're oh. they're very reminiscent of kind of that that gangster kind of like I feel. You gotta be a gangster. Sometimes you gotta have some gangster shit. Yeah, exactly. Um, so. And it was good. <laughs> I do like those ones. Marco Gerbez, Lido Kane, eight four, Fallout four, you know eighteen hundred, you know sixteen oh two, Final Fantasy seven. So, the, well, we already talked about that one. Okay, the, okay. the Anno games, I... Oh, you started in a weird spot. Yeah. You didn't tell I, well, me. Well, that was at the I top. Would, yeah, I, okay. Re, it repopulated. My bad. We'll continue on. Those so, games I haven't played, and I couldn't really find, and I apologize. Like, if you could send me links, I would really appreciate it. Uh, the other two, too. though, that you mentioned, uh, Final Fantasy and Fallout, I we have listened to. Too. We just talked about two. Yeah, and I really do love those soundtracks, so... If you could find me kind of like a reputable source or like mm -hmm. what's true to those mm -hmm. games, uh, I would really love it. I would love to listen to those. He's double even, I know. All right, so we'll move on. Jalen, Jalen underscore Dell underscore Ray. I believe Van Fall 3 and Halo 2. Kind of touch base on. Elder Scrolls, great. Uh, their soundtracks definitely embody what it is to be like medieval fantasy. Oh, yeah. And I, we listen to also regularly the Oblivion, uh, Skyrim, Elder Scrolls Online's like soundtracks or like the scores to them, and they're amazing. Yes, it, it really embodies what it is to live in like a fantasy world. You mm -hmm. know, whether you're a cosplayer or a gamer or just into like fantasy novels and things like that. Uh, the composer for each of those does an amazing job. Oh yeah, embodying what it is to be fantasy. Yes, they Which do. I really enjoy. Okay, so we got next one moving on is a journey beyond the skies. Your name's too long. Coyote rambling. He goes Zelda original in Ocarina of Time. Hello, hello. Mario's Brothers. Ha ha. Dos X. Mail Gear Solid series. Red Dead series. Call of Duty. Splinter Cell. Fallout. Elder Scrolls. No doubt more than that. But that's pretty much he. Besides Dos X, we talked about that. We didn't talk about the Red Dead series or Call of Duty or Splinter Cell, but. Okay, all of those, one of the reasons we didn't talk about it or listen to those ahead of time is because I've heard of all of those. Um, I was a huge Splinter Cell fan back in the day. I haven't done one in a long time. Uh, Tom Clancy in particular, but Splinter Cell in particular, in particular, if you're going to take a vertical slice, uh, was my favorite. Of the particular. Yeah. Uh, that, that kind of genre in particular was awesome. And I used in particular on purpose. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, that that espionage kind of like uh, James Bond yeah, kind of feel. Yeah, I see James Bond just yeah. popped in the head. 
Sam Fisher was great as the, you know, title character for that series. I haven't seen one for a long time. Hopefully we'll see one at E3. That ambient music in the background for any of the Splinter Cell games, great. Uh, Red Dead kind of falls in the same category as Grand Theft Auto for me. I'm not a huge fan. I like, the, I like still, the idea of still it. Still good music. But the music is good. Uh, that kind of like harkens back to me liking, you know, Americana or folk music. Yeah. Because it, Which makes it is like an Old West Western. Yeah. Really. Uh, and I enjoy that. Uh, all the others, like, I've listened to kind of here and there. I think the only other one of note that I would say that I know a lot about mm -hmm. is Metal Gear Solid. Makes sense. Uh, I didn't like the newest game, nope. which is probably, like, an unpopular opinion. But the any other game prior to that, you so really Metal liked. Gear all the way up to 4, uh, I loved. And it did have great music, and that was something... I think we listened to piano covers of some we of did, the, we did, the yeah. Metal Gear music. And it is unique in its own right, and definitely strikes a chord in me as well. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people who aren't into Metal Gear would appreciate the music. I think the games are definitely a very like, kind of specific breed, and there probably won't be another like true Metal Gear game. Since no, Hideo Kojima, Kojima left. left. And he has his own studio under the uh, Sony umbrella, and we're going to get Death Stranding, but I would mm -hmm. put Dollar of the Donuts that the Death Stranding soundtrack is going to be amazing. I'm so excited. I just can't hide it. Anyways, to continue on, now we have Mako at Wow Nut and thing Rob Hubbard touched. I don't know who that is. So... Rob Hutter, like, had done a, a, amazing, like, music and scores. Uh, it's very difficult to uh, <laughs> find the the music that he has done online, which yeah. is a shame. Oh, so we can, you didn't really were able to show me that. No, I wasn't, unfortunately. However, brilliant composer, I agree. True. Has done a lot of great things. Uh, I wish that his music was more readily oh, available, though. Dorks. Sorry, dogs. And I think that kind of, like, proves true in the validity of, like, video game music. I think so, too. There's a lot of these, like, brilliant kind of, like, composers or musicians who are video game-centric. And whether you're a video game fan or not, you might appreciate it, but you don't see it. And that really kind of sucks. Like, it does. They should be more in the, the forefront. Like, we shouldn't be talking about... We should to a degree, but they should be equal, I should say. Uh, film composers or television composers or, you know, things along those lines. Like, we, they should all be neck and neck and neck. They and and they're not. Like, the video games still have kind of a stigma attached to them in some way. And I think that does bleed over into music sometimes. Which is kind of cool, though. Oh, also, right. So we're about finished up here. We have, I think, three more people to go. Well, no, no. How so? The, with, when it comes to, like, being, like, composers and people, like, the shitty part when you get stuff like that, where you want to share this, but you can't find it. The game's old, this, that, whatever reason. Yeah. And you want to, like, share with me, per se. You want me to listen to music, and you can't let me listen to music. You can't share. But you said that was cool. That they weren't neck and neck and neck. It's cool to see that they're not neck and neck and neck because they kind of have that legendary sex to be you didn't hear it. I, I guess I'm more or less being like arrogant, I guess. Okay, so it's more like exclusivity. Exclusive. There you go. It's like, haha. Oh, okay. I, got I thought you were saying the other way. No, 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 like, no, 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 no. It's like, aha, I gotta fucking hear this. This is badass. This game is cool. This music made it. I wish okay. I could show it to you. I get where I'm just gonna tell now. you about it. It's gonna be in a little brain. Your little brain's gonna go mad because your brain can't hear it or see it. You know, something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I guess I should clarify that. No, you're fine. All right, so we have Doresis, Doresis, Street of Rage Two. That's good. Yeah, I mean, you're diving back into classic games, which I really appreciate. I mean, you're talking about David. 
Yeah, you're you're going into chip tunes and kind of classic video games and Streets of Rage definitely mm -hmm. had an amazing soundtrack, especially yeah. for like a beat 'em up or you know a fighting game. Mm -hmm. That series, even though it has been prevalent in a long time, is classic. Yeah, like, and something that everybody should play, even if it's not your genre. And the music accompanies that perfectly. And that's a soundtrack I do listen to regularly mm -hmm. and really enjoy. And that's a game I go back to regularly. That's good. Yeah. So I mean, that's one of those to. things where it's like, game, you, you know, know how much I well, love like, old consoles. Well, like with me, it's like I love playing my Zelda game. I get no matter what console, where, what, when, I always play fucking Ocarina of the Time. Yeah, and I really appreciated that suggestion because I hadn't listened to it in a, in a bit. Mm -hmm. But I did go back. Um, I have my headset on that I use for streaming, and I listen to it, and it's still just as good. The like, way I've never beat Ocarina of Time. Is there some games that are my favorite that I haven't beaten? It was like Pokemon. I won't beat them for that purpose reasons. Yeah, I beat the Red, and that was it. Yeah, way well, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we have Ancient One Seventy Three at Ancient One Seventy Three. Uh, Kid Icarus. Kid Icarus is great. It, again, another throwback. That's a classic. Um, the God of War team has <laughs> even talked about how the original God of War team, I should say, uh, used that as an inspiration. Yeah. That kind of, like, Greek mythology, um, like, basis for a soundtrack or a game, I always, find, yeah, I always find fascinating. I think it's really cool. Uh, we don't... We don't have a lot of that nowadays. Which you get sucks. God of War, and supposedly, like, the next Assassin's Creed is going to be based in, like, Norse mythology, Hopefully. so we're kind of getting close. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like people thought that, I guess, like, pop culture-wise or, like, fictionally, that it was, like, over-tapped. No. However, I don't think it was. I mean, not tapped enough. Yeah. And that's how I feel. So that's why I've really enjoyed, um, you know, Assassin's Creed Odyssey in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, Assassin's Creed, the Ezio collection, uh, God of War. Yeah. Uh, things like that. I think we should definitely tap more into game-wise uh, Viking culture, mm -hmm. uh, Greek culture, Roman culture, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. Uh, as, as Americans in particular... Uh, we derive ourselves from European culture. Which is really cool. For granted, it's been 200 plus years, almost 300, but we've, we've diverted as Americans enough to be independent in our own culture and our own music even. Yeah. That's why I like Days Gone is because of the, the folk music or the Americana that's represented in that. However... I think we should also cherish where we came from. Greek and lore and mythology. And we are all, like, like this is a silly example, but we have always owned mancoons, <laughs> which are a type of cat, if you don't know. And they... Not me, but cat. <laughs> yeah. Mancoons. And they're big right cats. And they're the only cat that's recognized as, like, a purebred in the United States. But it is hypothesized that they came from Norwegian forest cats, which is a relative of, like, Vikings. Yep. And also within our own personal history, it was... Always had cats on ships. They did, yeah. They had Hunt cats on ships who hunted rats and mice, which makes sense. And so when the Vikings came here, especially in the northern hemisphere, like Greenland and North America, uh, those cats, like, sometimes left the ship, and now we have this breed of cat. Yep. The Mancoon, which is, I believe, the only recognized, like, purebred, purebred. cat of America. It is. Well, I mean, they have others, but... Oh, you know, we have tabbies and stuff, but I don't think they're recognized... You know, in any kind of animal community. <laughs> However, that kind of, like, touchstone to Norway, like, Viking heritage and things yeah. along those lines, I think is awesome. It really is cool. Okay, last but not least, sponsored by Satan at Gunny Mo. Final Fantasy X. I I. Ten? I I? V I I. V uh, seven. Seven. And Halo, which we've talked about. So, Halo, I think... It was mentioned a few times in... Oh, God. Fallout and Halo. 
And Final Fantasy were a lot. And Zelda. Yeah, the so, figure. Fallout, Final Fantasy, and Zelda, we listen to a lot on a regular basis. Like, as we cook, uh, we're all fans of those franchises. Mm-hmm. Um, it's something we're very familiar with. We love that music, and we like to cycle between them. We have we do. some of those kind of, like, vinyl soundtracks. Uh, we stream stuff on iTunes. Like, we love it. It's something that, you know, calms us down or adds ambiance or background noise as we cook together. And it's it's definitely attached to our family structure. It is. Uh, it really Halo, is. Halo, however, we've never really been a Microsoft or Xbox kind of family. Probably. Yeah. But. However, we did listen to nearly all of the Halo soundtracks, and that was the most impressive. I've played a few Halo games over the years, not very many though, and listening to those soundtracks, well, and because really of cool. those suggestions, they were amazing. Like, the Halo soundtracks were great. They're, they're really good. It was, it was all over their place, but in a good way. Like, it embodied a lot of different types of music. Um, I would imagine they fit, you know, those specific, like, missions and levels and those games very well. Yeah. However, overall, it just did a great job. There are soundtracks that I would listen to on a regular basis without playing those games. Oh, yeah. That most definitely. And I really appreciate those kind of suggestions because that's the kind of music that I really enjoy and like, especially from video games. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how good those soundtracks were. You really don't until you like someone's just hey, listen to this. You're like, and then it just kind of that chord or tune or a sound that gives you that nostalgia, but then it gives you like, this is fucking legit. And yeah, and for me, it didn't strike a nostalgia chord because I didn't grow up with that or like continuously play those games even though I really wanted to no I yeah exactly and that's why it like differs with you and I it's like that's why I like certain games better than others is like because of Zelda and stuff and what it influenced me and brought me to do and be and play and stuff yeah and in particular for me like all of the Twitter suggestions that we had were uh, amazing they were great yeah overall Uh, a lot of them were games that you know, I had already played or listened to their soundtracks, but still amazing, like yeah. great suggestions because it was good to listen to them again if mm-hmm. I hadn't. Uh, the ones that I hadn't listened to that we listened to prior to this podcast, been amazing. they were great. Like everyone's suggestion for a video game music or video game soundtracks that like struck a chord with them were amazing suggestions and... I do want to, like, let everybody know that we did listen to all of them. We did. Well, like, if we, we hadn't find. heard it before, we we found it, or we tried to, and we listened to them. Yep. That's how much it means to us. And you guys definitely, like, structured this podcast and how it's going to be, because now every week I'm going to pose a question on Twitter. Maybe about art next week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I'm an artist. And I'm going to... Pin that tweet, <laughs> and I'm going to use your guys' feedback to uh, <laughs> structure the podcast, and you're going to define like the topics of discussion for every podcast, and which is we'll... really how I wanted it to be. I just didn't expect it to be so soon. True, and if not, we'll find something to talk about. We ain't going to be that boring. We will, yeah. We're Obviously, pretty, we're going to have soft we're weeks on Twitter interesting somehow. we people most of the time. I so mean. we'll definitely fill in, but Rage Quit is going to be a weekly podcast, no matter what. We're going to we're gonna do it regardless, uh, but I hope blue, that... Blue phrasing, buddy. <laughs> I hope that everybody, uh, you know, replies via Twitter and talks about it. Mm-hmm. And we definitely are willing to change, uh, like, topics or subject matter. Like, if we, if I pose a question on Twitter about our next podcast, and it's something that that's really not striking a chord with anybody, and we'll you have about a, a better idea, yeah, we'll do what she said. She we'll switch it up. That. So, I think we struck a chord. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, nostalgia. <laughs> I'm going to say this. 
Thanks for everybody for tuning in on Twitter or here. I really appreciate all the feedback that we had. Uh, video game music is something that's very important to us. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously very important to a lot of you. Oh, yeah. And that's amazing because music is transcendental. It whether you love books or video games or movies or television there's always a tune in your head there's always music and i think that's why this thread like struck a chord in a lot of people <laughs> is because music is transcendental it, it rises above all of us and kind of unites us and it was great to see that conversation and I hope we have another great conversation next week. Oh, we always will. See yeah. you then. So next week on episode three of Rage Quit. We I are, don't know. We'll post it. <laughs> we are going to discuss. No, I'm kidding. Streaming. We are. In particular. We'll ask that too. We'll find out what y'all think. We will. Yeah. We're going to post it on Twitter. Uh, it's going to be female centric, to be honest. What? what? I mean, woman, when that happen? How dare we? Uh, oh, I think. Shit. Female streamers have a hardship that we don't recognize as a streaming and video producing community. Yeah. So I think we should talk about it. So that's going to be the next pin tweet and the next episode for us to cover is female gamers and female streamers and how they deal with fans or the antithesis of that. Mm-hmm. True that, homie. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's a good time to wrap it up. Well, this has been Rage Quit, and I am Ariel Schultz. I'm Anthony Schultz, and this is Rage Quit. We'll be angry next time. Bye-bye. Hell yeah. <laughs>